Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm Jess. This is my garden and today I'm going to show it to you. I'm in the Midlands of South Carolina, zone 7A, no, 7B, 8A, right in between 7B and 8A. I kind of err towards the 7B side for caution's sake, uh, just because it leads to less disappointment. Um, I've been gardening here for the last two and a half years, and I've been sharing garden tours here on YouTube for the last seven at this property and at our farm before we were here. So right now the garden is very much in between seasons. The summer season is wrapping up, the summer garden, and the fall garden is really just starting to take off. We've got a lot of seeds in the ground, a lot of plants started, and a lot of places in flux, but, there is a lot to see and actually this garden right now exactly how it is may very well be my favorite garden I've ever had. It's wild, it's wonderful, it's feeding us lots of great food and there's so much to look forward to. So I figured why not have an early October between season, bit of a mess, little bit wild garden tour. So if you're new around here, let me introduce you to my garden. Uh, our garden runs the length of our driveway. It's about 800 feet long. The garden space itself is about uh, 80 feet deep, 70 feet deep from the driveway to the fence. And we practice multiple different growing styles for the sake of teaching and exploring and learning new things. This year we did something new in putting this garden in on the other side of the driveway. We're gonna change this next year. And this is going to be like basically the potato patch. Right now, as you can see, it's very weedy. Um, because we've pretty much let this go. However, we haven't turned it under or we haven't moved chickens over on top of it, which is what we'll do when we're done because we have lots of pumpkins out here that are ripening. So I put boots on and wade out into this every handful of days and collect the ripe pumpkins. Uh, we also have this row, this is Kibler okra. This is an heirloom here in the Midlands of South Carolina. Uh, cultivated and stewarded by Dr. Kibler and we're saving these for seeds so that's that's what's going on here um, it is honestly a little bit of an eyesore but we live in the middle of nowhere so it doesn't really matter we are changing up some things for next year uh, we do a lot of our projects when it's cooler outside in the fall in the winter so actually we're now turning our attention back to the gardening spaces whereas over the last handful of months all the attention on the garden spaces was just cultivating maintaining harvesting and that's that's been it our whole focus has been just the food but now that a lot of the stuff is dying back we're back to infrastructure which is exciting and this is the current project um, we just finished these beds up and started to top fill them there was some soil here because we were gardening in the ground and we've done a lot of work on this soil it has a lot of activated charcoal um, lots of composts and different things so we wanted to maintain that but we are adding on top of it uh, so this high tunnel is going to be currently almost entirely winter crops. Essentially things that can withstand a freeze. So this is going to be like brassicas, uh, kale, cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. We'll do lots of root vegetables in here. Some of these beds are going to be planted with like ranunculus, um, some sweet pea flowers, some flowers that will be cutting flowers next year. And in the spring, when we are done with all of the winter crops, we'll harvest them all and we'll plant cut flowers. So this, this tunnel will be entirely cut flowers through next spring and summer. And then likely as that wraps up, we'll replace it with winter crops. So here in South Carolina, uh, where our winters are pretty mild, it definitely does freeze. It even freezes hard, anything under 28 degrees Fahrenheit um, negative 2 Celsius is considered a hard freeze and we do have a hard freeze here which kills a lot of things but with just a simple high tunnel it will protect all of these winter crops from the worst of the cold and we'll be able to grow food throughout the entire winter in the space and we don't heat this um, and it will freeze in here even even closed up um, some people I've seen people talk about heating high tunnels that's because of the fact that we can grow stuff for the most part over the winter. I don't I don't feel the need to try to heat anything. I don't want to try to grow like frost tender stuff over the winter. I'm okay with that being seasonal. Um, but one thing that we may look at doing in here is doing an additional cover 
over the beds that maybe have like fussier stuff like lettuces or things that are going to have a harder time with a hard freeze. I don't know. We'll just have to watch the weather, see if we even need it. We do have some frost fabric and stuff. You can add layers of protection um, even inside something like this. But I'm so excited to have this space. We're, this is about 1,400 square feet of space. Um, these two tunnels together exceed by a good deal our house. <laughs> So um, this is a lot of space to be able to grow food. And we'll actually be sewing this this week as we get the beds filled up. A quick peek over here. Um, the geese and ducks may chat with us while I tell you. Uh, this is our orchard. We just planted this at the before the spring season. So this is only one year of growth. You can see some of our like peach trees and stuff are looking really big. This is a pear tree. Um, we'll turn our attention here soon, kind of weed out. We had to fence around all our trees because those rascally geese were breaking them in half when they were really small, but they're big enough now that we can probably start taking some of those fences down. But this is exciting. Um, you know, in the fairly near future, that's gonna be a place that's produced a good bit of food. So I'm curious, next month, in a be the beginning of November, I'll do another garden tour and we'll check in on these places. And this is gonna look really different. I love that. I love whenever there are very marked differences in spaces and I can go back and watch my videos and see what a difference a month makes. So here in between the tunnels, um, these are dahlias. Dahlias do overwinter here. So we'll just leave these when the freeze comes, it'll kill them. We'll cut everything back, mulch it and leave that until spring. Um, here we have some artichokes. We're trying some different places with artichokes. We grew a lot of them in this tunnel last year but I decided I wanted to try them outside. So we've got some here, um, so I like that. More artichokes down here as well as some different, uh, that's a blueberry. And then um, this we have, I can't remember what this is. Maybe it's a cherry berry, I can't remember. And then these are just some volunteers. And then these are just some weeds. And we've got strawberries running up the sides of these. I didn't actually like how these turned out this year so we may end up moving them but they just ended up having a lot of slugs and stuff growing on the ground i much preferred growing the strawberries in the green stalks we picked gallons of strawberries off of these so we're i'm thinking we may end up moving those strawberries out of the ground and into some more green stalk towers just having them up off the ground meant a lot less insect pressure and you know for me, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And in the ground over there, that, that was kind of broke. <laughs> this wasn't, so we're gonna move back over to this. So in this tunnel, we have some winter stuff. Um, you know, this is kind of the issue with starting winter stuff early. Um, the pest pressure is still really high. That will alleviate the colder that it gets. So we'll fill in some of these spaces with some more. I've got some plant starts here, some lettuces, um, cabbages, Brussels sprouts. I have a lot more in the greenhouse. I went to a local nursery and they had these flats for $22. So I ended up grabbing some of them. I also got a lot of these little violas. So um, these are kind of violas or Johnny Jump Ups, um, relative of pansy. They're more miniature than pansies. These actually are edible flowers. That's not really why I'm planting them. I'm planting them because they will live through a freeze and still bloom. So I like being able to have color. So when I saw those, I wanted to add those to the garden. So this is the pepper tunnel. Um, we have so many peppers out here. We have picked so many peppers and they're still steadily producing, but I'm going to leave these plants. Like I said, it does freeze in these tunnels. So when it freezes for the first time, we will drop the walls down, we'll close everything up. And if it's a very mild freeze, this stuff may continue living. I think the high tunnel can probably protect plants from a, a brief and mild freeze. Now, if our first frost ends up being like a really hard freeze or 
if for some reason it gets really cold and like doesn't warm up during the day and then it gets cold again the next night if it's extended over the course of a few days eventually the soil temperature and the, the air temperature will drop in here to the point that the plants get really damaged so we'll just have to see but i decided to just leave the peppers going until they die from the weather because we still do have warm days we'll be able to clean this out after that and move some of the plants that we have started for brassicas in here even if it's like november now those things may grow slowly over the winter without having a lot of light but they will grow and we'll be able to harvest them at the end of the winter or the beginning of spring back here i've got ginger this i will harvest before um, the freeze comes and we have some things like these are radishes that we planted um, over here like this is a brussels sprout and see that um, there's a few of them again pest pressure we've got lots of beets i've been harvesting them oh I keep walking through spider webs <laughs> sorry little guys <laughs> Does anybody else turned into a ninja when you walk through a spider web here I have some chard. Um, this bed is so sporadic because we've been planting it and it's warm outside. And whenever it's warm, a lot of these cool weather crops don't really like germinating. So the germination has been a little sporadic. So you see we have a few older plants and then younger ones. That's because these germinated, the rest didn't, so we re-sowed. Um, so, you know, at this point, I can't say that our, um, our garden is very clear like I, I can't even tell you what a lot of this stuff is i'll be able to tell you once it gets bigger but it's cold weather crops it's just a mixture of them <laughs> i kind of do take like a much more laid back approach to the fall garden simply because stuff like that and i just it's i can't hold too tightly to it just because it is a gamble like i don't know what the weather's gonna do i don't know if it's gonna freeze so hard that's gonna damage my stuff i you know like i just have no clue what to expect so I, for me if i just look at it as i'm gonna try i'm gonna put seeds in the ground you know i'm gonna cultivate the spaces and enjoy having them and any food that i get is bonus we usually end up getting a lot of food uh, but if i were to have like a very stickler approach like really trying to get as high a production as possible then things like a freak freeze or you know unseasonably cold temperatures or whatever would really be upsetting to me so i don't want the garden to be upsetting i want it to be fun so i just take a more laid back approach in the winter so this is one of the summer spaces that's kind of on its last leg we are still harvesting a little bit out of here but for the most part um, this is all pretty well gone the wild way of the end of season garden like this is just a sea of holy basil there are quite a few weeds in here um, at this point lots of volunteer flowers popping up very soon we will put a chicken flock in here and uh, let them eat through all of this they'll scratch it all under they'll um they'll help with the bug population because any insects that have you know laid eggs in the soil the scratch the chickens will find them and they'll actually replant a lot of this stuff so we did that last year and ended up with lots of volunteer basils and flowers and different things like that um and i kind of like that so we're just gonna let the chickens have this space I'll tell you, I'm noticing a ton of grasshoppers this year. I actually see several on these okra plants over here. And that's another reason why I want to go ahead and put the chickens in here. Because they, they will help knock back the bug population. And then that way we're keeping it organic. We're not having to spray anything. Um, and, and it just helps bring balance. So this this will be very soon we'll have chickens in here we were kind of holding off because i was still harvesting a good bit of okra we still had some cowpeas out here but that that's very quickly coming to an end as i mentioned my wild in-ground garden is still turning out quite a few pumpkins dutch fork pie pumpkins we're working on the seeds on the okra but we have moved the chickens over here you can see them over there uh, we have both of our laying flocks 
we moved them out of the pasture during the summer we move those throughout the pasture uh, which that helps the chickens will scratch through any cow pies and basically that helps knock down the fly population but in the winter we move them over here because obviously we're not dealing with flies in the winter and we want to use them in the garden spaces over the course of the winter so here in the middle this has been the last couple years the potato area and it's it is currently um, right here this is all sweet potatoes we probably have about three weeks left before we start digging those they're starting to bloom right now which is good to see usually those bloom and then you start digging them a few weeks after that so it's right on track of what we expected um, these are actually potatoes this was a second planting uh, potatoes planted in the heat don't always do really well these took a little while to take off but I, as I said it's all a gamble I'm not 100% sure we're going to get a lot from these but we're going to leave them in right until the last frost and then dig them then and they may be very small potatoes but I think that we will get another harvest off of these which we currently still have I probably still have like four or five buckets of potatoes from our spring harvest five gallon buckets um I don't have a great storage system. I have a shed that I use for a pantry. It does have a mini split on it, so we are able to keep it pretty cool in there. But uh, my potatoes typically do sprout. I'd like to try some more varieties and see if I could get something that does store better. But as it is, I'll be really glad to get anything that I can from these potatoes because that will give us more food over the winter. And then of course the sweet potatoes. Usually what we do is we eat white potatoes, which we don't actually grow white potatoes. We grow red yellow and purple ones but um, you know starchy regular potatoes through the summer through the early fall and as those all start sprouting to the point of really not being usable we take whatever's left we set it to the side to use for seed and then we switch over to eating sweet potatoes because we're usually digging those all out right before the frost comes now this space here in the middle where all of those are growing plus what is currently tarped we're actually transitioning this over the winter um, into a new space. As I said, we're gonna move our potatoes out where that other in-ground garden was. Um, because potato beds, I, we, do no, we do no dig mostly. Um, we do, do not till mostly. Uh, with potato beds, you can't really do no dig. Now, you don't have to do a deep till because that is very damaging, but you can do a shallow till to prepare, prepare your potato spaces. Um, and that's pretty much what we're gonna do over there where that in-ground garden was and move the potatoes out so we can establish this in the middle of the garden belt as a, a no-dig space. This is gonna be a perennial space. We're gonna grow lots of berries. Um, just whenever you're looking at the grocery budget and you're thinking about what to grow, I like to give preference to spaces and growing projects that really offset the cost of groceries and of course I've got five sons and berries are very expensive so if I can grow lots of berries and use those in smoothies and muffins and freeze dry them to use in yogurts and cereals and oatmeal and then of course just for fresh eating we can go through a lot of berries and that could really save us money if we were able to grow all of those ourselves so that's what this space is primarily going to become this is a large space it's probably not as big as it looks on camera. This wide angle lens makes my garden look massive and it is a very large garden, but it's not as big as it looks on camera. Uh, but I'm very excited to get this established. With the winter projects and the establishing, one of the things that's on the list to focus on this winter is the fencing. So there will be a fence that runs the length of the garden between the garden and the driveway, which will have multiple gates of varying sizes to be able to get whatever equipment we need in here as well as entry points. Um, but then we're also gonna do kind of some partition gates in between the sections. Uh, these won't necessarily be for the sake of containing anything. It's more for establishing line and order and having spaces that I can grow things on. But we're gonna do a pretty little fence in between these two spaces with some sort of arbor or archway as we enter into what we call the raised bed garden. Um, which right here we have these three really long raised beds. These are, I believe these are 60 feet long-ish um, and four feet wide. Now we grew tomatoes on these this year. We'll grow tomatoes on them again next year. As you can see here, 
we just cut the tomato plants off at the soil the root systems will break down and add life back into the soil so instead of pulling them out which would cause a lot of disturbance but also cause us to lose a lot of soil we just do it this way and we've already re-sowed this bed with seeds um, that should be coming up here in the next week or so. We've got carrots, beets, chard, calendula, um, snap peas, sugar snap peas, and radishes filling this entire bed. These spaces I've not sowed yet. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do onions down the sides of these beds. I haven't fully decided yet, which is why I haven't put any seeds in. So these have to be completely reworked. Um, this is the cottage garden. We'll come back to it. We're going to come down here and take a look at these raised beds first. So this garden, so beautiful and wild and lush. I hadn't planned on planting just a ton out here that is for the cold weather. Um, if we had a mild winter, what is more typical of South Carolina, I could grow any brassica any root vegetable outdoors with no cover over the winter. Last year, we had um, record-breaking low temperatures here in the area. And everything that I've been reading by people who study weather, they're saying that this will also be a really cold winter, which is why I'm focusing most of my growing efforts for winter food into the high tunnels because I know I'll be able to provide some measure of protection, obviously with the high tunnels. That said, um, out here, as things are coming out, and since I don't have time at this point to sow anything that's frost tender, like a squash takes 60 days to produce and our first frost is in about four weeks from now. So putting squash seeds in the ground would just be a waste of squash seeds. Um, I have been throwing some seeds in for things like beets and kale and uh, stuff that I'll be able to harvest. It is purely a gamble um, because if we do get extra cold temperatures, I'm going to focus my attention on protecting what's in the high tunnels. And it's just gonna be the Hunger Games out here. I'm not going to buy frost fabric to cover these beds. I'm, I'm not gonna do anything to try to keep this stuff alive. So, I mean, I, as long as I have that expectation, I'm fine throwing seeds in the ground, but I just know that with growing spaces down there bigger than my home, that's enough. That's enough food for us. That's enough work for me. Uh, so out here, as long as I view that as extra, I feel like that's a healthy way to approach it. So there are some spaces here that are just, you know, kind of a mess that will need to be reset, like this area, for instance. We've got some dried up sunflowers. Um, we'll cut these, which I don't think there's really much left in these as far as seeds go. But we cut those and throw them to the birds. Uh, this is lemongrass. I will harvest this and hang it up to dry for tea here actually very soon. I love this. It smells amazing. If you've never smelled lemongrass, it's actually one of my favorite smells. Um, lemongrass essential oil is something that I've like worn for years as like a fragrance. I just dilute it into like a roller bottle and put it on. It smells so good. And so anytime I come by here, I grab a piece of this and crunch it up and smell it. It's so lovely. It makes a wonderful tea as well. Um, it's very popular in Asian cooking. I know it's not a super popular flavor in American cooking, but it is a great tea. So I'm excited to have all of this. This was like one little start um, and it grew to this big. I paid three bucks for it or something like that, or maybe it was four at a plant sale. And look at that. That's amazing, right? So I've got lots of messy spaces that are going to need to be reset. We also have a whole lot of squash growing out here as well as green beans because um, about, I don't know, two months ago, we just came and filled all of the available spaces at that point with squash, green beans, cucumbers. Here, the Thai soldier beans are pretty well spent. Uh, there are quite a few on here that we'll save some seeds from. I won't save all of these seeds. Uh, likely we'll pull these plants out, throw them to the pigs, and yeah, we'll probably have Thai soldier beans volunteering until the end of time because of how many I let go dry on here. I think the thing we're probably getting the most right now is green beans, or in this case, purple beans. 
just lots coming in for harvest, which is nice. I actually think I prefer growing gr beans, snap beans like this in the fall over the summer. Because in the summer, I have all the tomatoes coming in. I've got a lot of things that need preservation and oh, green beans are not my family's favorite. I'm really the biggest green bean eater in our house. So I'll cook them fresh some, but primarily I do either blanch and freeze or can them. And in the fall, I don't have nearly as much preservation to do. So it's a good time to have something coming in that needs time in the kitchen to save. So I got one flush of cucumbers and all my plants started to shrivel up. I don't know why, um, but we have been harvesting some. That's been nice. My spring cucumbers didn't do great. So we cleaned out the green stalks of the summer stuff. The tomatoes were all getting really puny, you know, into season. We get blight real bad here because of our humidity. Uh, but I'm thinking I may fill one of these up with some of those little Johnny Jump Ups or pansies just to have some color. And then I will also do a salad green stalk with lettuce greens. Because kind of like the strawberries, I prefer growing my lettuces in a vertical situation up off the ground like this the green stalks are great for that because you water from the top and it just makes for much cleaner salad greens you know i used to grow them in a garden bed i would just broadcast a mix you know musclin mix or whatever into the garden beds but then rain or watering would cause splashback it's hard to mulch well when you have such tender small greens all growing close together and so they would get really dirty i would have to put them through the salad spinner a lot now with this and growing salad this way you just come out pick whatever greens you want go in a quick rinse and they're ready to go which i appreciate that speaking of one small plant that got really large this was one small thai basil plant that became massive and i have not touched it i've not pruned it it was from the beginning one that i just let the pollinators have but i've never seen a basil plant get this big it is easily six feet around um, and it has been just covered in bees it's really cool to see um, here are my eggplants which have been harvesting very steadily as the weather's cooled off they've begun to set new blossoms and set lots of new fruit which i'm actually really excited about it looks like i'll probably harvest at least another couple of really good harvests because i've i mean i've still got fresh blossoms and it just depends on how long it takes for the freeze to come and uh kill all this stuff but i will take eggplant as long as i can get them been eating a lot of baba ganoush lately which is delicious oh I, I think this is my favorite little nook um this year and i love the fact that it's on the end so i see it like every time i drive by I walk by if i'm going to the barn i see this crazy wild nook i've got lots of pole beans again i don't keep up with varieties really in the winter garden because it's just whatever took uh bitter melon this plant's gotten really wild um I've been giving a lot of this away at this point. I mean, there's so much. I don't have, if you've got a great recipe for preserving bitter melon, please let me know. Um, mostly this has just been for sauteing and, and stir frying. It's definitely an acquired taste. Nobody else is super crazy about it, but I think it's interesting. And you know, I can eat just about anything. <laughs> this is massively prolific. And I'll go around and show you. Um, more zucchini. This is just like an emerald zucchini. Oh, that's interesting. Um, we had a bunch of swallowtail butterflies on the parsley, the, uh, I had some dill, some fennel, and I say butterflies, caterpillars, swallowtail caterpillars. And they'd eaten it all. Well, I noticed that the plants had started to grow back and now I'm seeing lots more caterpillars. I like parsley, dill, and fennel but anytime something like swallowtail caterpillars come and i have the host plant in my garden usually by the time they come i've already done a good deal of harvesting from it and i usually just let them have it which i'm glad to see some more back i knew we had a lot that went into chrysalis um a couple of probably like a month and a half ago i didn't know there would be any more this year 
here I've got butterfly peas, interesting, right next to the butterfly caterpillar plants. Um, these are beautiful flowers that make a lovely tea. Um, I'm going to be saving a lot of the seeds from these. They produce this, these peas. The peas are not edible, uh, but the flowers, the flowers are as a tea, and they make a really good dye plant as well. But inside of these are the hard seeds that I'll save. Um, they'll be mixed up because I grew both colors together, but that's okay. Here we have lots more purple beans. Um, as well as green pole beans. Lots more zucchinis. Uh, we've harvested for the last, I don't know, four weeks, we've harvested lots of zucchini. I've been grilling a lot of them, sauteing a lot of them. We've had some big ones that have gone into zucchini bread. But here in the last couple of days, we've been noticing some really small worms in them. I'm not sure what's going on with them. Hopefully we still get some harvest, but I'm not gonna do anything about pests. By this time, I just don't bother uh, messing with like pest control or trying to handle. Honestly, throughout the season, I don't do a whole lot about pests anyway. I usually just plant extra and get what I can get before the pests take over. But um, now I'm not going to do anything. If the worms are getting into the zucchinis, oh well. You know, we've been picking them and if they're damaged, we just throw them to the pigs and the chickens. So, um, it, I, again, at this point I view it all as kind of being extra. So this bitter melon plant trellis is so thick. This was two plants, it was one on each side. There was one seed on this side, one seed on that side. I sowed more than that, but they didn't germinate. Uh, when they first started coming up, I couldn't even remember what it was because I just threw them in one night. And look at this, amazing, extremely prolific. I am really, really happy with these. Now down on this side were my first two tomato rows. Um, this is still producing. Now I've been picking the green tomatoes and making green tomato recipes. By the time these turn red, uh, they don't taste very good. The skins are just really, really thick and we're just at the point in the season, you can kind of see this has a lot of pitting. Um, they're just dealing with some fungal stuff and just disease. And so I haven't had a great ripe tomato for at least a few weeks. They just, by the time they get anything near ripe, they're almost rotten tasting. But I left them for two reasons. One, um, it's creating a nice blind for the pavilion. So you can literally just come sit in this pavilion and be hidden, which was my hope in this garden in the first place. <laughs> Let's give this to the chickens. The chickens moving over here works out great. We do this very intentionally right now. They're getting all the plants. We're pulling out all of the food that's rotting or pest riddled. Um, and then eventually they'll get in the garden itself. So I, I didn't want to take the blind down here, but I also wanted the green tomatoes. So I've been making like green tomato chow chow. I've, uh, I've got a recipe for green tomato enchilada sauce um, that I want to try. And especially with the weather cooling off about three or four weeks ago, the plants started setting more flowers again because tomato plants drop their blossoms when the temperatures are exceeding 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 Celsius. So with these being this old, I mean, this is late in the season to still have tomatoes. Um, it's almost like they're getting a second wind with the weather cooling off. You can see we've got flowers again, meaning I've got lots of green tomatoes. And so I'm actually not keeping these for ripe tomatoes. I'm keeping them because I want the green ones. And at this point, because I wasn't trying to put a lot of winter crops out here, I don't need this space for anything. So I'm completely okay to let these ride. Um, they are 12 feet tall. They're massive they've reached the top of these arch trellises and with all the new growth that you actually can't see how sick these plants are i mean they were all brown and shriveled up and gross um like there is some ripe fruit on here but it doesn't taste good at all um but yeah look how lovely they look i've never had tomato plants this late if that were started out in the spring usually if I have tomato plants in October, it's because I took suckers and made second growth tomatoes. Um, so yeah, here's another eggplant. Like I harvested all of the big fruits off of this. I did a video, it's just a handful of days ago. And look, I mean, it's already got several more 
amazing so prolific funny i've got things like this basil this is holy basil didn't plant this this just volunteered from i'm sure uh, seeds being carried down from all of that holy basil down at the other end of the garden belt maya the other day asked me he's like do we still have any basil that's good for tea because he knew that all of that stuff down there has gotten very seedy I'm like actually we do have some i didn't plant it but i can harvest it because i've got these little random basil plants popping up isn't that so cool so here in the middle um again more green beans here these pepper plants will be coming out here pretty soon we just reset this bed and as i said i think i am going to put some kales and some root vegetables out here but i'm not planning on going through great lengths to try to save them it's just if they grow well that's great and if not that's also okay um i've got some zinnias they are kind of just barely hanging on but beautiful this is the redmond cactus zinnia they've kind of got these pointed petals so pretty um the green beans i've got cucamelons like crazy these took quite a while to take off this year but they're finally covered and prolific as i'm used to them being so cucamelons are kind of an acquired taste i think um People will grow these, I think, with expectations of them being like a real food source. I don't view them that way. It's more like a novelty, a snacky thing. But as far as a practical use, I'll tell you what I do with these here at the end of the season when the plants are loaded. I'll come out and harvest a, you know, a big bowl full and then go in and make a few jars of fridge pickles. So you just make a basic brine. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a link. I'm pretty sure I have a blog post about this with my fridge pickle recipe. It's you can fridge pickle pretty much anything, but I'll put a link to it. Um, but I'll take these and then sometimes I'll put in some like onions and garlic and herbs, but turn these into small bot jars of fridge pickles. And then over the holidays, whenever we're doing like gatherings or little parties, Christmas parties uh, on Thanksgiving, I usually do some sort of charcuterie board you know, for whatever, if it's a party or if it's Thanksgiving, just like a grazing board. And these make really great fridge pickles for a charcuterie board, just because that's when you can kind of share the novelty. They're fun, people haven't seen them before. They're very uh, lemony and they pop. So if you're one of those people that hates that texture, cucamelons are not for you. I actually don't mind that texture. I think it's kind of fun. Um, I actually think they taste really good. I can just snack on these, uh, but they do have that pop thing. They are very like kind of bitter. I don't want to oversell it. For cucamelons, these taste great right now. They taste like a really bright lemony cucumber that pops in your mouth kind of like a grape. Uh, they can get really sour and bitter if it's very hot outside. So that's why I like to wait to harvest them for my fridge pickling until the end of the season because they're a lot more mild. They're a lot more cucumbery and less lemony um, when it's cooler out. So yeah, these, I do not recommend canning these uh, because being in the canner even for five or 10 minutes, the heat is going to turn them really mushy and that's not fun. So doing it as a fridge pickle, you can maintain the crunch, which is what makes these, I think, fun to eat. These really struggled in the heat this year. Um, they just weren't getting to be very big. They were, I mean, a lot of mine were like this. They were staying super small, uh, which is not the usual. This is more common for them to be more grape sized, but I think they're super fun. They look like little baby watermelons. They're also sometimes called mouse melons, but I've got a lot on here. So I'll have to do my charcuterie fridge pickle thing here pretty soon. So behind me, this is a big uh, bed of okra, which we've pretty well let this go. I'll save some seeds from it. Um, okra, towards the end of the season, it'll start getting real knobbly and stuff. And usually at that point, we've ate our fill. I've usually frozen a good deal. So a lot of times I just go ahead and let it go. That's what's happened here. Also, I mean, some of these are so tall that I was having to pull them down to harvest. I was having to grab them and pull them over to be able to cut them off. All right, quick step back here to the cottage garden for just a look. Asparagus beds, they're, you know, obviously super wild 
So I leave these alone. Once everything is frozen, um, I'll wait until these have kind of gone into dormancy, cut it all off and mulch it. Those will come back up in the spring and we'll have a lovely asparagus harvest. Um, the cottage garden is definitely wild, wayward, beautiful. Um, this is something that I'm hoping to rework over the winter. It's actually not the highest priority. I'm prioritizing that perennial berry space over this. We may be able to do both, I don't know. Um, this may be a next year project. The reason the perennial berry space is gonna take priority is because it's food. I always prioritize food projects um, just because I, that's what I care more about. I care more about growing our food. This is purely an ornamental space. I have lots of beautiful stuff in here. If we do rework this, we will not be like just scrapping it. I'll be digging plants up to move them. But I would like this to be a little more cohesive. Um, I would maybe like to do something a little better as far as weed management. When we did this stonework, we didn't put anything under it. And my idea was I thought I would be able to do like creeping thyme. And I planted lots of creeping thyme and then the Bermuda just ate it up. Uh, so it's just got tons of grass growing up. So I'd really like to redo it, but like I said, that, that's only if that's gonna be a feasible thing. It's, it's just not the number one priority. And even with it being wild and the grass growing up and all of that, look at it. I mean, it's still just astounding. We've got amazing things like these big roses. All of these are dahlias. Bud Leah, this is a Celosia that volunteered. I didn't plant this variegated celosia this year. I had some in here last year. And look, isn't that amazing? Actually, I had one of these in my green stock last year. That's what that came from. This is asparagus that's just growing wild because of seeds uh, being carried by birds. All of this, like these are hibiscus plants that just got huge. Um, I've got sedums, more roses. These are the $5 clearance roses that I got from Walmart. <laughs> I went in there and they had, no, I think I got them for $2.50. I think maybe they're normally $5 and I got them for $2.50. I bought, I think I bought seven plants and yeah, it was less than $25. And I just threw them all through here and they're, they're very lovely. Zinnias that are now wild and crusty. I just threw those seeds in. Yeah, um, got sweet potato vine. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so undecided on this, but I just kind of lean into the fact that I don't have to be decided right now. I can focus on my food garden and eventually this will come together. And in the meantime, I can just choose to love the wildness of it. I do find it hilarious that our greatest weed in our gardens right now is asparagus. Isn't this wild? <laughs> it's weedy, but it's so beautiful. Pineapple sage, huge. This was one tiny plant. Here I've got the Confederate rose as well as a volunteer celosia that just popped up here in the middle. Look at that. Look at this. Sometimes the garden's so beautiful that it's just silly. Like, you silly guy, you're so pretty. <laughs> one peek in here, it's a mess. Here I've got, uh, these are peppers that were actually growing from a few plants when we thinned out our peppers, we threw the thinnings in here and they just rooted and started to grow. It was like a fish pepper. This looks like a sugar rush peach. I wasn't sure what was out here. But I'm curious to see if maybe we can keep this alive in the glass greenhouse. And then here are a lot of our brassica plants. They're gonna be moved out into those high tunnel spaces. We've got uh, kale, broccoli rob, uh, Romanesco cauliflower, uh, red acre cabbages, lots of different food. And this is actually, this is a good bit. This is gonna fill out a lot of spaces because you gotta think, I mean, like a head of cabbage needs a couple feet in each direction. So we'll be able to, to fill a lot of spaces with these trays plus the things that I have out in the other high tunnel. So there we have it. My silly, beautiful, wild October garden that has fed us all year, uh, definitely kept us busy, and is full of promise to feed us over the winter. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you, until next time.